This week on Healthy Living, polio cases keep popping up in Africa. We'll take a closer look. An expert talks to us about vaccine initiatives in Malawi. Plus, a new bill proposed to ban smoking in Malaysia. Finally, women in Brazil turning scars into tattoos. That's in this edition of Healthy Living. Hello, I'm Kamiti Kibayasi in Folina Homodu. Thank you for joining us on Healthy Living. Polio is an infectious disease causing lower limbs to become paralyzed and largely affects children under five years old. Since the World Health Assembly adopted a resolution for the worldwide eradication of polio in 1988, vaccination campaigns around the world stopped the virus from spreading. And as of 2020, Africa was declared polio-free. Cases have popped up recently. This year, cases were reported in Malawi and Mozambique. The World Health Organization stated that their analysis showed it came from Pakistan. This means Africa is still considered polio-free. But it's a reminder that until polio is tapped everywhere, it remains a risk, as is stated by Hamid Jaffrey, Director of Polio in Education, WHO, Eastern Mediterranean Region. Afghanistan and Pakistan have not yet been declared polio-free. The case in Malawi is the first in five years and has sparked a vaccination campaign in neighboring Mozambique, where two cases were recently reported. Our correspondent, Amancio Vilanculos, has more from Pemba Cabo Delgado. 430,000 children under the age of five will be vaccinated against polio in districts of Cabo Delgado, including those hosting families displaced by terrorist group associated with the Islamic State. Across the country, at least 4.2 million will be vaccinated in this campaign, which is led by the government of Mozambique with the support of the United Nations Children's Fund and the World Health Organization. Here in Cabo Delgado, even if this province is not bordering directly uh, Malawi, we decided to be part of that uh, due to the current situation that we have in Cabo Delgado and also due to the fact that many people, as they are IDPs, as they moved, as they are living in, in settlements where there are too many for those places, and the routine immunization for the children hasn't been completed or never even started for some children, it's the moment to try to protect as much as possible all the children under five, at least for polio. They decided to launch the campaign in Cabo Delgado first because of the instability and higher number of internally displaced people in the region. The higher movement of people in Cabo Delgado makes it important for the children to be vaccinated. This is part of the reason why we're also doing the campaign. It's because of uh, the high movement. This is a higher risk for the country. To avoid duplications, children are handmarked with permanent ink on their little finger. My son will grow very healthy and happy. I always vaccinate all my children. Poliovirus is highly contagious and mainly affects children under the age of five. The virus is transmitted person to person mainly through fecal matter or less frequently through contaminated water or food. While there is no cure for polio, the disease can be prevented by a safe, simple and effective vaccine. Janet Kayita, the country representative for the World Health Organization in Malawi, talks to us about launching an emergency vaccination campaign in the country to keep polio at bay. Let's take a look. We are strengthening surveillance, doing active case search, ensuring all health workers know what to look out for. It is a concern, but it also is a good thing that the Malawi surveillance system was able to pick up this case. It is a setback. But what it does mean is that we have to work with urgency to ensure 
that we get ahead of the virus because it is targeting all children under five everywhere in Malawi and across the border because this is not a one country effort based on the risk assessment we absolutely know that it has to go beyond Malawi borders. For Malawi, for instance, we know we're targeting 2.9 million children. At the lowest administrative level, a clear knowledge of how to reach them, so a good understanding of the terrain. This is done through a process called micro-planning. The strategy is house to house. It's also looking broadly and seeing other children immunized, is any of them paralyzed or show any signs of polio because it's both immunized children, but also undertake active case search. It is going to be done in four rounds, a month apart. After each round, understand very clearly how we have performed. Are there any missed children? Where are the missed children? And if necessary, mount what are called mop-up campaigns the oldest, most well-planned public health program is the immunization program. And already it works with a strategy that's called reaching every child. So if you live in Sanja district, for instance, the local administration, the hardest to reach place, the community health worker in Malawi called a health surveillance assistant, uh, assistant can tell you how to get to those hardest to reach children. So the monitoring processes between rounds will be able to tell us whether we've reached every child or not and how to correct this. We've been very lucky in Malawi that His Excellency himself has been speaking very directly to parents. The, the Public Affairs Committee of Parliament is mobilized, the Interreligious Council is mobilized, they're busy issuing calls to, to their congregation, Rotarians are helping. Every district has a health education officer. The community radios are publicly airing these announcements. So there's active community engagement because the purpose is to remove all of the barriers that we know that stand between a mother, a caretaker, immunizing her, her child. Ethiopian health officials say child malnutrition is on the rise in drought-affected southern areas, where the UN says millions are facing hunger. Aid agencies are calling for urgent assistance to Ethiopia's Oromia region. Gelmo Dawit reports from Yabelo, Borena Zone in the Oromia region. Mother of two, Shukur Muhammad has brought her malnourished two-year-old son to the local hospital in Oromia's Borena Zone. He is malnourished due to drought. We do not have the milk to give him. He is now surviving because of the supplementary feeding he gets from the clinic. The UN's World Food Program says half a million livestock have starved to death in southern Ethiopia, while nearly six million people are facing hunger. <laughs> Borna Health officials say they have registered more than 125,000 cases of child malnutrition in just the past few months. We set aside this room for malnourished children. We are keeping some in the outpatient department because we are now at capacity. Medicine in some areas is running low and despite health officials appealing to humanitarian agencies in the area, their efforts were of no avail. There is a huge gap regarding medicine. We have been appealing for help but get no response. Aid agency Action Against Hunger is helping the region's health facilities to treat malnourished children, but says the ongoing drought is a challenge. The problem is now getting tougher. All concerned bodies should provide more help for the communities living in this area. But with attention focused elsewhere, Southern Ethiopia's most vulnerable are left struggling to survive with little assistance. Over 700,000 people have been internally displaced inside the Romia region due to insecurity in areas where they are rebel fighting and intercommunal violence. Regional authorities say they are trying to meet the needs of half a million civilians who are forced to leave their homes. Malaysia's health ministry 
is proposing a major initiative to prevent young people from smoking. It's a bold plan, but critics say it has flaws. Dave Grunabom has the story. Across Malaysia, it's easy to find people lighting up. Government statistics show one in five Malaysians 15 years of age and older smoke tobacco, including 40% of men. And this is a major problem because a lot of people are losing their lives due to smoke-related lung cancer. The country's health ministry is now pushing to permanently ban the sale of all tobacco and smoking products to anyone born after the year 2005. A great idea and a good step in the right direction, but its success or failure depends on how much support it is able to get from both the government and society at large. People are going to find all those black holes, all those little holes for them to buy cigarettes. CEO of the Libertarian Think Tank Center for Market Education says if the proposal becomes law, it will do more harm than good. It's not going to reduce consumption, it's only going to increase the illegal consumption of cigarettes, which in Malaysia is already extremely high. A study conducted in 2020 by the Confederation of Malaysian Tobacco Manufacturers concluded that more than 60% of cigarettes consumed in the nation were from the black market. Further prohibiting uh, cigarettes will end up like uh, the American prohibition for alcohol during the 1920s. So we will have our uh, very own uh, Al Capone for uh, tobacco smuggling. The problem lies in enforcement and one of the solutions that we can actually put forward is to address the corruption and the presence of organized crime. Experts warn the success of a bold plan to cut down on smoking depends not only on legislation and education, but strong steps to tackle the corruption that's helped create the country's massive black market. Every scar has a story, and sometimes those marks are a constant reminder for trauma that you cannot erase. Women in Brazil are visiting a tattoo artist in Sao Paulo to change those permanent painful reminders into art that brings them joy when they look in the mirror, hears more. I came back to life after this tattoo. I am a woman again. I am a mother again. I am a friend again. It is life. That's all I think. It is life. And what it represents for me today is my new life. I realized that I could help people who needed my work to re-signify the scars of bad things, things that didn't bring back good memories and that they wanted to get rid of. So it wouldn't cost me anything to take a few days out to help these people. This is how a social project was born when I saw that I could help others with my work. The movement is not about passing the needle over the scar. There is a technique to use the needle that decreases the intensity of the machine and passes in some places with scars. The result is all the design that we will make, all the aesthetics of the design that we will create, and filling the deeper and superficial parts of the scar. The most severe difficulty I find is the creation of the design. I expected the best, but it was more than the best for me. I can't describe it. Unbelievable. She is a blonde angel who came to me. With your art, you can transform someone's life. You see it in their eyes. The person has a bright soul. They shine with happiness. That moment makes me carry on with the project, knowing that I succeeded in transforming that person's life in some way for the better. For the latest news and coverage on the coronavirus, stay connected to Voice of America at voanews.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Mkamiti VOA. That's our show for today. Until next time, stay well and strive to make every day a healthy day.